Welcome to the Heart of Dating Podcast. Hey, it's Kate. I'm so glad you could join us this week as we try to untangle the ever so ambiguous world of dating as a Christian. Over here on Heart of Dating, we get real as we answer some tough questions and uncover transformative ways to approach Christian dating. Oh, and you better believe we have some laughs along the way, because last time I checked, the struggle is hashtag real. You know what I'm saying? Now, let's get to the heart of the matter. Hey, y'all, we are in the middle of a season break, but we are still bringing fresh content to you each and every week, probably content that you never heard before. Or if you have, it's probably been a long time since you've heard this content. And so we are bringing back some of our Heart of Dating Select episodes. These are episodes from our archives that are so incredible that we wanted to reshare with y'all in case it's been a long time since you've heard them or in case you've never heard them. Now, today's episode, we talk all about waiting to have sex with two friends of mine, Carson Blair and Angela Blair, and it was an incredible discussion. Their story is unbelievable. I love their hearts to pursue God and how they did that in their relationship and with their physical convictions and physical sexual boundaries in their relationship. I love that they say this in the interview, what we want long-term is far more important than what we want immediately right now. And then they say, while rules are important, it's not about legalistic boundaries. At the core, it's about having a deep love, honor, and respect for God and yourself. I love this idea, you guys, of having a deep rooted conviction in what boundaries you're setting in your life and in your relationship, all that's connected to the heart of God. See, conviction is really, really good, but doing something just because somebody tells you to is just really, that's what we call legalism, right? So we have to have a healthy, godly, true conviction that's really rooted in understanding God's will for us, His design for us, His desire for us, and then wanting to serve Him so badly well that we are just convicted. We can't do anything but want to serve Him well with our convictions and with the boundaries we set in our life. So I love Angela. I love Carson. They are beautiful people. This episode was downloaded so much, and I really think you're going to enjoy listening to their story on how they, in their relationship, waited to have sex. And I want to tell you one more thing before we start this episode. We launched an awesome guide called Are They The One? In this guide, we talk all about how do you know if someone is the one for you? What is the one? And then what are signs that they may be the one? What are signs that they may not be the one? If you want to get this free guide, you can go to heartofdating.com forward slash resource forward slash the one. That's heartofdating.com forward slash resource forward slash the one. And you can get this free download. It'll be sent instantly to your inbox. It is so good, you guys. I really hope you'll take advantage of it. All right, without further ado, here's my episode with Angela and Carson. Carson Blair and Angela Zadapek. Hey guys, welcome to Heart of Dating today. Hi, thank you for having us. Yeah, we're excited to be here. Thanks for having us on. <gasps> you guys, I love y'all. It's just, we were talking before, I'm like, we're just going to have fun, you know? And it's just like friends chatting about dating. And I'm so excited for everyone else to hear the story that I've grown to, to know and, and love about you guys. And so just can't wait to have some fun and for everyone to hear this. Yeah, we're excited to share it. We really honestly haven't shared it to that many people except our close friends. So this is pretty fun. Yeah, (laughs) and we're honored. Like I truly, I we do not take that lightly. And so everyone listening, once you hear today, I encourage you to go connect with Carson and Angela and just shower them with so much love for sharing their story with us. (laughs) Would you guys just do us a favor too and just share a bit about who you are, what you do? My background is working in TV and reporting and hosting. I was on air for the Christian Broadcasting Network and done some really awesome things with other networks like National Geographic and Fox. And it's been so fun to do reporting. But really, my my journey started with kind of my testimony going public on a crazy reality show. I'm originally from Texas and found myself back here this past year after being gone for quite some time and met Carson. So 
can't wait. And you have a jewelry line that I love too. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. And I have a jewelry line that I, I, I started last year. So it's beautiful. Um, so I, I grew up in a small little Texas town called Argyle, Texas, and <laughs> went to a pri- private little school where everybody knew everybody. So it was a tight little community and only graduated with 82 kids, I think. Relative to Angela's like 2000 or something. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Um, 82 yeah. people. So, wow. Yeah. So just to give you a, a little bit of context of kind of where I was raised and the environment that I was raised. And then I signed out of high school at, with the uh, Boston Red Sox wow. and played with the Red Sox for seven years and then ended up playing with the Rangers for a hot second, the A's and ended up finishing up with the Chicago White Sox in AAA. So most of my post high school days have have really been spent traveling the country, a little bit out of the country, hopping around different cities, different teams, wow. living in a bunch of different states, and <laughs> always been on the road and got to see the country and play a game while doing it. So cool. I love both of your stories. So unique and unconventional in a, in a sense, you know, like Angela on TV and Carson professional baseball. Like that's so cool. <laughs> you guys. What's so funny is my dad played baseball and I grew up around the sport my whole life. And I always said, I'm so bored watching this sport. And then I'm <laughs> now I'm marrying a, a former baseball player. Oh my it gosh. I I will fully support that. I don't even watch the game anymore. I think it's unless you know the nuances of sequencing and what's going on in people's heads. I think it's very boring to watch. I think it's slow. (laughs) So I don't blame anybody. I think it's a fun social outing. That's why I like to go to a baseball game to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I I don't really I'm not going to say that I really watch it. However, I did kind of grow up playing some softball. And so I was decent at softball back in the day until I got hit in the face with the softball and had like (laughs) stitches and stuff. So then I was like, I'm kind of done with softball now. (laughs) So, yeah, that's hilarious that you just said that, Angela. And now you're marrying a baseball player. So there you go. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, okay. I want to hear so many details. You're going to get all into like how you guys met, but another detail as well that is unique to you guys is, but you're both over the age of 30. Will you just share your ages with us? (laughs) Yeah, I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and kick this one off. It's a little easier for me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm, I'm 30 years old. And I am a proud 32, okay? Yeah, girl. Use a cougar. (laughs) You better work it. I love it. All the ladies said said amen. He said a few comments over the course of our relationship about me being older. And I'm like, you know what? You know you're marrying me, right? Like, I'm older than you. He's like, babe, I'm just messing with you. (laughs) It's a vibrant youth. All right, whatever, young grasshopper. Exactly. Young, young Padawan, young grasshopper. Soaking up wisdom through our relationship. The two years of difference. I love it because this is you you hardly see it this way. You I mean, a lot of people complain that like guys are 40 and they date a 20-year-old, you know, and so it's refreshing to see. (laughs) You older woman. I mean, how am I even calling you an older woman? You're 32. (laughs) I'm a woman established. Yes, you are a woman. 32. (laughs) The 30 plus, the 30 late 30s and 40s people are like rolling their eyes. They're like, okay, 32 and 30. Y'all are young. Like, you know, what's crazy is we're getting married in like a month and a half, and (sighs) my birthday's in August. So for a little bit of time there, I'm going to be 33, and he'll still be. 30. I mean, that's pretty wild. I'm looking at his face right now and he's looking a little freaked out. I'm like, babe. (laughs) Yeah. Like you're going to hit 40 before he does, you know, like, let's just talk about that. Um, Hit the hill. (laughs) Yeah. It's so funny though. Cause I, I've always like, I never pictured, oh, I'll marry someone a few years younger than me, but yeah. it really is just a number and we just connect on so many levels. So yeah, I think I'll age is it. it's about maturity, you know, it's, totally. just, it's less oh. about, it doesn't matter. I don't even care at someone's age these days. I'm like, how much do you love God? Where's your relationship with God? Are you mature? Like, have you yeah, sought- life experiences? Exactly. Too, right? 
Yeah, that's so true. So not only are you guys in your 30s, woo woo, but you've also, fun fact, waited to have sex till marriage. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> First, I want to start off by saying that's amazing. And I don't want to also put that on such a pedestal that we're idolizing it for people listening. I want to be careful of anybody who you know, has a different sexual past. And I just want to say that, but I I do think it's super honorable and really amazing and beautiful. And so I kind of want to dive into part of that. Before we get into your story, I want to kind of ask, why did you guys decide that you wanted to wait to have sex until marriage? Because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm only doing this because the church told me to do it. And doesn't really connect with their heart that much. And so I'm just curious, why did you make that decision and how were you able to like stay true to that over the years? Yeah. Okay. I'll go ahead and jump in on that. Cause I think, I think I was just very lucky to be honest. I kind of gave you some context earlier about kind of the environment that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. And at that small private Liberty Christian school, I remember very early on, I don't remember exactly how old I was, but it was before middle school. I remember a gentleman coming to speak at our school and um, he was a very, very powerful speaker. And he, he talked for a lot of the speech about just challenging men. And he was like, I, he was like, I don't get it now. He was like, I don't, I don't see why men think that they need to be these muscular, powerful, dominating people. He's like, go stand in front of the Pacific ocean and flex your muscles. How, <laughs> how big do you think you'll feel then? <laughs> Oh, wow, he was good. like, I don't, I don't understand why men feel like they need to conquer women. Mm. He was like, dogs run around and have sex. He was like, that doesn't make you a man. Mm, wow, that's good. And I was like, whoa, okay, <laughs> I get it. Yeah. And for some reason, that just has always stuck in my mind. Is like, that's not, that's not a, a manly thing. What most people think of masculinity and like muscle and aggression and ego, like those things aren't at all what actually makes a man. I I think I was just very lucky, honestly, that I heard that message early on and I would question myself like, okay, so what does make a man? Mm -hmm. And I would sit there and think about it. And I'm I'm one of those people that'll sit there and think think way too much. He's an and Enneagram it, five. Yeah, Angela's over here giggling. <laughs> She's like, gosh, he'll just the Enneagram um, five in the house. Yeah, I'm a very introspective yes. person. So I'd sit there and think about, okay, like what does make a man? And I thought, okay, I think one of the things is refraining from causing harm when you're capable of it. And that can be physical. Uh, again, I think I was just lucky and I was a bigger athletic person and there, I'm sure there were tons of situations where I could have caused physical harm to someone, but I've never hit anybody. Yeah. Um, never, never thrown a punch. People think that's weird. Yeah. So not having sex, I think is probably just right up there with that as well as people are like, dude, that's weird. That's, that's not exactly the picture of masculinity that most people think of. Yeah. But I think I was just lucky that I questioned that early on. And I think, I think another aspect of that, going back to not causing harm when you're capable of it, I think I actually I'll retouch on that later because I think that applied to my perspective on dating and my approach to dating too. But yeah. I think we'll, we can dive into that later, yeah. but so I think good. I was just really, really lucky that that was questioned early on. And then I think it w- probably just was more of an egotistical challenge, to be honest. It wasn't It wasn't like I was the most morally upright person and I had my Bible memorized. It was more of like, yeah, that sounds like something I want to do. That's going to be a challenge. Hmm. So I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm not going to do it. And so I, I think it was being in the right place at the right time, being lucky. And then honestly, it was just as simple as I took it as a challenge. Hmm. And that's just, it's something that you learned as a value early on. It sounds like you learn that value in like a healthy capacity. And unfortunately, so many people kind of learn it in a different capacity of like, just don't do this, you know, versus like, hey, what does it really mean to be a man? Is doing that going to make you more of a man? No. You know what I mean? Versus yeah. it being like, just don't do this, which I think is a lot of the messaging we've gotten, honestly, in the church setting with I kiss dating goodbye and some of the purity culture stuff, it's, it becomes more legalistic than really connected to our heart of like, oh, who is the man I want to become? You know, who am I becoming by the things that I'm doing? And does having sex make me a man? Does, you know, flexing my muscles make me a man? The answer is no. Right. <laughs> and yeah. that's so incredible. Uh, I'm curious before we go into Angela's side of this too, Carson, 
you say these things were like not expected in quote unquote, like modern day masculinity. And then here you are on a baseball team, like a pro baseball team. <laughs> I can imagine this came up and people were like, wait a second, what? Like, what did that look like for you in kind of maintaining true to that value when I'm sure people were, it caught them off guard and maybe challenged you on it? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was interesting in so many different ways. Yeah, it would, it would come up slowly. Obviously, that's not a common question or a common topic of discussion in locker room. Just when everybody was would talk about their, you know, nightly conquest of their choice, then I was, you know, I just kind of stay out of it. Wouldn't wouldn't make too many comments. And mm. when, when it would, I would just, you know, tell them, like, no, I'm just I'm just waiting for my wife. And be like, what? Hold on. <laughs> Bro, what? And yeah, <laughs> what are you doing? I think it's really common for people to say, you realize, like, dude, what are you doing? You're wasting your life. Oh, like, wow. You're, you're wasting your time. Like, guys guys would say all the time, it could be revealing too much, but they're like, dude, I would do anything to look like you. Like, you're wasting it. Like, give it to me. <laughs> oh, wow. Jeez. And I'd be like, well, I mean, I just think I understood what I wanted. Yeah. And I think being being in a baseball locker room also helped me describe what I wanted in a way that wasn't biblical as well. Yeah. Because... If you explain to a audience that has never been exposed to the Bible, never been exposed to religion, who knows what even what country they're from? Yeah. Um, we have tons of Latin players on our teams. We have European players on our teams. Yeah, they might not even be coming from the American culture. Yeah, and so when I talk to them about explaining my position and why why I decided to do that, I think it kind of evolved over time. And I would I would tell them that I want the strongest relationship with my wife as possible. Mm. And they immediately understand that. And so I'd tell them that I want to experience as much as I can with one person. Yeah. Um, wow. Like even, even stupid things like there was a, a restaurant in, in Dallas that's unique to the city and everybody thinks it's a big deal. I was like, you know what? I just want to wait and I want to do that with somebody that's meaningful. So like I'd never, never gone to that restaurant until I took Angela for Valentine's Day this year. Oh, so it was, <laughs> it was, it was just like, I wanted to experience everything with one person. Yeah. And I also grew up in a family that experienced divorce yeah. and um, my parents divorced when I was in middle school. I saw the challenges that that presents for a family and presents for kids and how that affects kids and their development and how it affects say like my younger sister and how she perceives men and relationships. Yeah. And I, you know, felt the burn and that burn was strong enough to say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do anything that I can to not relive that or not put my kids through that. If I can save these different experiences in my life to fully experience life with one person, then I'm all about that. Mm, I love that. So honoring. <laughs> Babe, you want to get married? <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. Oh my, oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm just, melting over here. Yeah, gosh. fan yourself over there, girl. It's okay. <laughs> Month and the a half. Lord answers prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Ladies listening, men do exist Ladies, like this. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. God, no, I I'm just like so impressed with you, babe. It's awful. Oh <laughs> yeah. I love that. Oh my goodness. Thank you for sharing all that, Carson. I'm so impressed by that. So encouraged. Angela, I would love to turn it to you too. And just the same question of how did that conviction get spurred on your heart and through your journey of TV broadcasting, reality TV, all the stuff, how did you stay strong yeah. to this for yourself? Well, it's so funny because Carson and I, we obviously are both waiting um, and have waited, but we also have a very different just experience with dating and relationships. Yeah. I have been in a few very serious relationships and, you know, I, I've never obviously wavered on my choice, but it's definitely been a journey for me yeah. just to, for God preparing my heart through different relationships and experiences. But I'd say it all goes back right to our childhood, which is what a lot of us, yeah. what, what we grew up in, in the environment. And I'm the oldest of four. I grew up, you know, in the South. So going to church and it was just kind of what you do, right? You're yeah. around that. Yeah. But my mom and I were in the pool one day and we're having the sex talk and she really explained to me really well, just the importance of 
preserving that for marriage and why. And just, she really like my parents did a great job of building us up. Like, Hey, you're, you're so valuable and God loves you so much and wants the best for you. So wait for his best person to do that. That's good. And that just, I don't know why it really sunk in with me. And I think, you know, I'm the oldest, so I saw a lot through the divorce and probably knew more than I should have through all those details, but it, it made me want to say to myself, I want to wait until I can fully trust someone with my heart and give them all of me in that way. And really my prayer, my whole life, I've prayed very specific things for my husband. I've prayed that he will have eyes for only me and that he'll also be kingdom minded and how he views the world and just how he thinks about stuff, even down to social media. I mean, it's so funny because yeah. I think that's a trap in itself. And I literally prayed for a guy to not be like, I just think it's a problem, not just with guys, with girls too, but I think it's a problem today just with how we can construct our thinking and how we think about things and letting the influence of social media and others and just our culture affect that. Yeah. And literally it's so funny because Carson's not even on social media. <laughs> yes. all, that's how we like, met. Do you have like one photo, Carson, or something? I, I, used to, yeah, I, I have fake. four. Okay, um, four photos. There you go. Yeah, that's a big deal for me. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think just like Growing up in, in a home where my parents really did a good job, but like, I just think over time, it's, it's really just been impressed through me seeing different relationships around me that I'm like, wait, no, I'm going to wait until I can like really trust someone with my heart. Mm, so that's so good. What I'm hearing a theme in both of you guys say too, is the way you were raised, but also seeing divorce in your childhood really spurred to you of like, oh, I don't want that to happen for my future. I want to really cherish this. I want it to be one time that I get married, one time that I have sex with a person, and not one time, but like with the same person. And just, I want to rewrite that for my future, you know? And I yeah. think there's a hope mm -hmm. that exists within that for people listening where maybe they they didn't have parents that talked to them that well about this topic, you know, or actually like a lot of parents handle it terribly. I love my parents, but like, I didn't get a the greatest sex talk when I was younger. And it inspires me to say, oh, but I can do it differently. You know, that was some of the cards I was dealt, but I can do that differently for the generation of a family I'm going to have. And I don't have to have divorce and I can educate my kids healthily on a healthy sexual ethic. And I think there's a hope exists that exists for everybody listening and A, that it is possible to maintain abstinence in dating, but also B, that if that wasn't your upbringing, like it's possible to rewrite that for yourself for the future. And I think there's so much hope within that for your, for your future spouse, for your future family. Hey guys, what's up? I want to tell you about our sponsor for today's episode. Hey, so I am not the best cook. All right. I am not the best cook, but I really like to eat healthy food and I want to eat it. And yet I don't want to go to the store and get all the stuff for it. I'm just lazy if I'm being honest. So I love that we've discovered HelloFresh. You get seasonal ingredients picked at peak ripeness for quality that you can taste. Ingredients travel from the farm to your home in less than seven days, so you know that they are really fresh. It also saves you a ton of time, okay? It saves us like an hour or two, literally every day when we make meals. And we've made some amazing meals with HelloFresh. They just, they have so many options too. It's just so good. It makes cooking fast, easy, and delicious. We recently had a beef tenderloin and garlic herb pan sauce with mashed potatoes and asparagus, and it was mm, chef's kiss. So delightful. Okay. Also, what I love is you guys have probably heard me talk in the past about Green Chef. Well, Green Chef is now owned by HelloFresh and now together they offer a wide variety of meal plans to choose from. So there's literally something for everyone. I love switching between the brands and now my listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount with me. Let's go. All you got to do is go to HelloFresh.com slash HeartOfDating50 and use the code HeartOfDating50 for 50% off plus your first box will ship free. 
Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash Heart of Dating 50. And then use the code Heart of Dating 50 for 50% off. Plus, your first box will ship free. You guys, it is incredible. I love it. We use it all the time. It's my fave. Yes, check it out. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. I love it. Seriously, it is. So you guys, this is incredible. I want to also talk about how you guys met. <laughs> I love this. So we just Instagram. Yeah. Speaking of Instagram, uh, will you share with us how you met? Just give us the lowdown on what it looked like for you guys to finally connect and date. Oh my gosh. This is yeah, ab- absolutely. And I'll, I'll tell it from my perspective first. <laughs> as ironic as it is that I, I actually really do hate social media and don't, I understand it's a tool that has some value and there are ways to use it positively. Yeah, totally thank you, Carson. That. We are doing that. Totally <laughs> understand that. Yeah, she's like, um, hold on. Yeah, no, there's, there, it's an absolutely a great tool to spread positive messages. Um, but I just don't tend to enjoy what it brings out in people. Yes. So anyway, to get to our story, I haven't shared this with many people and Angela was actually surprised to hear this, but I actually sat down with a pen and paper first and <laughs> sat down and addressed the, the topic of dating because I was somebody that always wanted a, I always wanted a girlfriend, never had one. Oh, wow. Angela's yeah. my first girlfriend oh ever. Oh my gosh, first. what? <laughs> yes. No. So Angela was my first girlfriend. And, <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, when he this, told me so, this on our first date, I was like, is he a serial killer? <laughs> 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 I would think the same as like attractive man, baseball player, never had a girlfriend. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. That doesn't like, add up exactly. Yeah. It's not expected. It's like, okay, oh. something's wrong here. I need to give someone yeah. my address right now. Where This is oh, where right. I am. If something happens. <laughs> oh, a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had always, I would always wanted a girlfriend though. I think since I was probably about 22, I had, I had always just wanted to find that girl that I would marry. This is kind of what I was referring to earlier when I was talking about refraining from causing harm when you're capable of it. But I always approached dating as just pursuing a wife. I didn't want to date somebody just to date somebody and then end up breaking somebody's heart or wasting somebody's time, wasting my time. So I never ended up dating anybody more than like two or three dates. So I met Angela. But then anyway, fast forward to when we actually do start to communicate. Um, I literally sat down with a pen and paper (laughs) and wrote down like, okay, I think I was about 27 at the time. And I was like, okay, so what's, what's the problem here? Like, how have you not been able to find someone that you're attracted to? And at the time I, I literally wrote down that my biggest fear was not meeting someone that I would be attracted to as a person. Mm. And, um, so I, I legitimately like wrote down that, that fear that that was my biggest fear at the time was not ever finding someone. And so I I wrote, wrote down like the context of my life and what I thought the challenges were. And then I was like, okay, how do I overcome that challenge? And one of them was literally, okay, you need to need to open up basically the marketplace that you're exposing yourself to. It's like, what are the odds that you're going to run into that person if if she really is like one in 10 million or one in 1 million or whatever you, right. stat you want to yes, put out there? Yes. I was like, what are the odds that you're just going to casually run into that person at a grocery store, restaurant, bar? You're, it's going to be your friend's best friend, whatever. Yes. Um, so I was like, <laughs> you know what? I was like, just mathematically, it makes sense that you should use some sort of um, social media. And so I was like, all right, I'll kick my ego to the side and I'm okay with it. Um, <laughs> so I, I didn't sign up for a dating app or anything. Not that that's wrong, but yeah. I was just still, I was still too prideful. I haven't, I hadn't gotten over that yet. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I, I was scrolling through, I think it was Facebook. Uh, and one of my friends had liked a video of Angela's. So apparently if you like a video, then it shows on your feed. I think that's how it works. Okay. Person yeah. So somebody I'll please correct me, this. but yeah, I don't know uh, exactly. Our, Maybe it was Angela. Was it like your public figure page? I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. I think his, yeah. It, it was just on the feed. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. anyway, I'm scrolling through and I see, Oh, this girl's really attractive. Let's see what this video says. And 
So I clicked on it and watched the video and um, it was Angela speaking, encouraging women, encouraging them in their faith and encouraging them to wait for marriage and encouraging them to stand up for their, their values. And I was just, I honestly like just caught myself thinking, whoa, like this girl is gorgeous and this message is unbelievable. And then I also saw that, okay, this girl's mature. She's waited for some period of time. And I didn't know how old she was at the time. And I was just like, she's, she's a mature person. <laughs> and, <laughs> Older than you. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, I was like, you know what? That's, that's really impressive just because I know that she's had to have had a lot of people pursue her, not to discount anybody else that has made that decision or been very disciplined. But I was like, I know guys, I've lived in locker rooms my entire <laughs> life with creepy dudes that, <laughs> that just hit on girls like Angela all the time, 24 <laughs> seven. And so like, I, I know she's been going through that for her whole life. So I was like, wow, that's really impressive. So I thought about it and I was like, you know, that girl would be awesome to talk to. And so I thought about it for about seven days and then I eventually got up the courage to write her a DM. Yes. And so, <laughs> on Instagram, right? On Instagram. On Instagram yeah. Yes. So I, I Googled how to write a DM <laughs> and <laughs> because I hadn't, I hadn't ever sent out a message through Instagram before and oh I, I hadn't <laughs> posted anything but the original four pictures on my Instagram. <laughs> and so I didn't really know how it works. And I was scared to death oh that the goodness. first message that I sent was going to be me hollering at a random chick <laughs> and then somehow it'd be exposed to the public. And everybody would just see that. Oh my file. gosh. So, okay. I get it. That's yeah, hilarious. It sounds sure like you're from right. the stone age. Like I, I oh, yeah. dude, write an Instagram DM. Like, yeah. Yeah. No. And, <laughs> I wanted to make sure though, no way was that message publicized. Exactly. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. So I, I even, I even remember like writing it out in Microsoft Word too. Cause I was like, I don't want to write it halfway <laughs> oh and gosh. like, and accidentally hit send if I'm trying to just go to the next line. So I was like, I'll just write it somewhere else and copy and paste it in. I was just total nervous dork so about cute. it. I love it. <laughs> I, I sent her the DM and then every day, late afternoon, I would check it. I was trying to be disciplined and like not look, act like I wasn't that uh, <laughs> worried about it. And so I, I'd check every afternoon and then probably after about seven days, I looked up and I was like, Carson, and I was like, you're an idiot. Like, She's not going to answer that. That's oh. so creepy. Like, well, why, why did you do that? Oh, and no. so I, de I deleted the message on my end just so I didn't have to look at it and oh, I could act gosh. like nothing happened. <laughs> so, so the I, rejection, I totally, you're like, okay. That yeah. Was, and to clarify, I do think reaching out on DM is a total great way to meet somebody just to yes. validate you. Shockingly enough. Yeah. I've, <laughs> really I've heard a lot of other people say that they've started great relationships that way. Yes. Yeah. So it's way more common and way more successful than I was even aware of at the time. It was just kind of an over analytical approach that somehow ended up working. But yeah, anyway, so I, I deleted it and just didn't want to face reality. And I eventually forgot about it. And then one day, 18 months later, I look up and I get a notification and Angel responded. And I'm oh like, my gosh. what? 18 months. I'm like, hold, oh my my, gosh. hold on. At first I was like, who is this girl? And then immediately, like when I saw a picture, like I remembered exactly who it was. And I was like, oh my gosh, that girl still exists. <laughs> and, and she's a maybe single? Like, yeah. You're like what? <laughs> like what's the going on here? <laughs> yeah. I did not know there was a second folder. I didn't know this of like other DMs of people when if you don't follow each other. Yes. The so message request like, folder. <gasps> yes. yes. The request folder. A lot of interesting things. So my friend was like, oh yeah, the request folder. I was like, what are you talking about? And then I opened it and I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is crazy. I didn't even know this existed. And I was scrolling and I saw Carson's like picture, you know, the little yeah. thumbnail photo. And I was like, well, let's see what this guy has to say. So I opened <laughs> it and I'm like, he is gorgeous, but 
is his is this a fake account because it was like <laughs> <all Nikki's> photos <laughs> and it was a base pro baseball player so i could have been seriously catfish but i thought it was worth a response <laughs> guys, hot. yeah <laughs> you're like wait a second if this is a real deal like yes like who are yeah, you <laughs> on that show catfished or yeah. <laughs> love of my life <laughs> Have you ever seen that show? It's really yes. Scary. No, it's terrifying. I think it's the worst. It thing. Really is. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. gosh! So she responded, and then you guys weren't living in the same city, right? You were. So how did that? What did it look like? Yeah. The pursuit and dating process after the Instagram DMs were exchanged mutually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was actually a really formal exchange of messages back and forth. Like going back and look at it, it looked like two business people setting up a <laughs> meeting to, yeah. to make some sort of proposal. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <transaction>. <laughs> yeah. And um, so it, it took a few weeks, I guess, a couple of weeks of exchanging messages back and forth. And I didn't even know where she lived at the time. Uh, I, for some reason, thought she lived in Austin, but that was just where she had gone to college. And so she, she was in New York at the time mm -hmm. and I was living in Dallas and um, her jewelry manufacturer for her jewelry line happened to be in Dallas mm. and she just happened to have a trip planned out in a couple of weeks out to Dallas to meet with her manufacturer and work on some designs. And so she said, Hey, um, I'm going to be in town around these dates. Would you happen to be available? And when she said that, I was like, hold on. She's kind of making her trip a little flexible around me. I know like, what I was doing. <laughs> oh I was yeah, like, girl. Okay. Is he in town? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa. My honestly, my first thought was this girl's either the nicest girl in the world or she's kind of into me. I can't tell. <laughs> and oh my so gosh. That, that was the first time that I ever like had an idea of, whoa, she might be might be into me. Like she's willing to kind of adjust her trip around me. Oh so, yes. <laughs> yeah. So he pulled a hey, we can meet for coffee, but to be honest, I was like, I'd rather just meet for dinner. Let's just cut to the chase. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if there's sparks. I was like, Yes, yeah, she's aggressive. I like it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so good. <laughs> yeah. So a couple of weeks later, she flew out to Dallas for for business. And we ended up having having dinner on it was a Friday night. And mm -hmm. we just hit, hit it off and had a lot of very, very frank conversation. And I, I told her, I was like, hey, like one of, one of the reasons that I was so impressed that I reached out to you um, was just because because your stance on on waiting. And I think that's just extremely tough to do and for someone in your situation. And yeah. I think that just shows a lot about your character. So and, we, and we literally he, had that conversation. Well, on night the first one. date. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But then he was like, well, I, and I made that choice, too. And, you know, I've waited. So I just was curious. And I literally did a double take. I was like, what? Because <laughs> I've played you know, like I've made this choice, but I've always said to myself, like, if who I marry isn't a virgin, like, obviously that's okay. But yeah. I never expected to actually meet someone that also was waiting. Oh I gosh. was so mind blown. I was just like, this, this You're is like, what? This and a pro thing. baseball player, like there's all these, I don't, it's like just stigmas, yeah. right? But it's like, you maybe wouldn't assume right. that. And that's why it's so, it's just a, such a cool God moment to be like, wait, what? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. It, it was such, it was so crazy to me, which is so funny, right? Cause like I say, like I'm waiting too. Why is it so crazy for me to believe about someone else? But I've just, I've just not met. I don't know. I've just never met a guy that I was really attracted to and we had the same beliefs and he was waiting and it just seemed like I was in another world. And wow. so I woke up that next day <laughs> This is so funny. <laughs> and I woke up and he said, Hey, if you're staying the rest of the weekend, I'd love to spend time with you. <laughs> and it was alumni weekend. Hold on, hold on. Let's what? let's tell tell the story about the actual awkwardness. So <laughs> because, okay. so so night one Friday went well. And then I didn't I didn't text Angela good night. Oh. I didn't say, hey, had a great time. Yeah. Nothing like that. <laughs> I guess it's I guess it's fair to say I'm a pretty average dude. I'm just a bad communicator. <gasps> oh my and gosh, Anna's here. Yeah. Oh, hey, you know when you go out with a guy yes. and then at the end of the 
night, you get dropped off or you go home and they're like, hey, had a good night. Like, hope you got home safe. Yes. Right. It was pouring rain. No text. No nothing. <laughs> You're no, like, no bye. <laughs> I was like, I guess that didn't go as well as I thought. And I woke up the next day. I was like, maybe he'll say good morning. Hope you made it back safe. Nothing. Radio (laughs) Carson. Oh my God. I know. I was like, all right. Um, you know what? I am not about to even try to like get into something where this is just no. (laughs) Then he but he had told me the night before, he's like, let me know if you stay in town. I'd love to hang out again but it was alumni again right my dad played baseball so it was baseball alumni weekend no in Austin, my dad was at the university of texas and so i was i woke up and i was like all right this guy was gorgeous he seemed to love jesus he's waiting we had a great time but, but i don't believe me. it yeah i was like <laughs> but I now i, I don't just, believe it because he didn't follow up <laughs> I was, no, I was just like, no, I've just been down this road. You think some one thing and, and you know, yes. so I was like, I'm just going to go. So I get in my car. I start driving to Austin that morning. It literally looked like the apocalypse outside. <laughs> like there were tornadoes, Dallas, you get a lot of tornadoes. Yes. Out this day. Yep. The weather is so unpredictable. And there were just tornadoes everywhere. It took a tornado to make me stay in Dallas because it was like (laughs) all up and down the highway from Dallas to Austin. So I was like, I'm going to die. So I'm just going to stay in town. So I was like, well. Yeah. Lord was looking out for me. Yeah. Bring my girl back. We ended up hanging out Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I really don't know what would have happened if there wasn't a tornado, babe. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I was like, nope. You'd have gone back to Yankee Land and I would have gone back to New York. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Also, good note to self, guys. Say it, send a follow-up text. Yes. Yes. Just like PSA right now, public service announcement. (laughs) Be a gentleman and make sure she got home okay or tell her you enjoyed time with her. It's so important. No matter how much confidence. I feel like people appear to have. I think everybody needs reassurance, and maybe maybe even more so women. I don't know. I don't want to overstep my boundaries and say that women women desire that more, but I think I think everybody does. Honestly, so I, think I think even if you're not words of affirmation, I think it's nice to have that little bit of like, oh, I it's confirmed what I was feeling, what I was thinking is mutual. You know what I mean? And so I think it's just always good. And I'm words of affirmation. So I like, it is a deal breaker for me. If a guy doesn't send a, like a follow-up text after I'm like, okay, bye. (laughs) But I think just in general, even if you're not words of affirmation as your top love language, I think it's important. I think, I think women really appreciate it. I haven't met a single woman that doesn't appreciate a text after that's like, Hey, hope you got home safe. Really enjoyed my time with you. Even if it's basic, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So obviously you guys are now meeting. You're like, we're both waiting for marriage. This is amazing. I really connected with this person. You start dating. Um, and then you're really attracted to each other. Like how in these moments, as you're starting a date now, Carson, you're getting your first girlfriend ever. Woohoo! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, man. Um, what did it look like for you guys to like, you know, put in safeguards and just continue to hold on to your desire to wait. Cause at this point I can assume like it's both super strong in your hearts. You're like, I'm not, cr- I, but like, it's still probably like you're attracted mm-hmm. to each other as that builds. That's difficult. And I don't want to lie to anybody on the show and right. say like, it's not difficult. Like it's a difficult. Yeah. It should be difficult I, in a way, you know, like it should be. Yeah. Otherwise we're too shut down to our sexuality, which can happen too. So What did that journey for you guys look like? You don't have to share like all the explicit details, but you know, how did you really maintain that in your relationship? I think what was helpful was we had that conversation on night, night one of this is what we want. And I think it's really just been helpful to us to, to understand what we want. Like, I think it's an exercise in delayed gratification. Like, I think it's really Mm -hmm. important for us to understand that what we want Long term is far more important to us than what we want immediately right now. Yeah. So I think that's something that we both understood and we both talked about early on. And so I think it was a little more natural that way. But as we as we dated, it would it the conversation wasn't like let's hey let's sit down and go through a checklist, babe. Like 
what, what do you want to do? Like, it, it, and you know, it just happens organically as we're, you know, exploring each other. Like we are extremely attracted to each other. And so like we would, we would make out for hours Long at some, time. <laughs> <laughs> some point. And so it just like hap- happens organically. Where do you draw the line? And then we had that conversation and then it's like, okay, now that you have your boundaries set up, I kind of describe it as like bowling. Like once you put your bumpers up, you do whatever you want in between. Like you understand. <laughs> you understand <laughs> where those lines are. <laughs> I just covered my eyes. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. So oh like, once you once you have your guidelines, you're like, okay, you stay stay between them. <laughs> what you're saying is like, it, you know, I don't want to be here like giving everyone an explicit. This is the line. You can't cross this. You can't do this. I think it's so much about our heart posture what I'm desiring to honor, how I see myself and getting on the same page. I think my biggest thing for me in this, just like you, you guys are saying is I just have to be on the same page with that person. I yeah, can't be I, on page three and them on page four. It's not going to work out. It's some. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, not to cut you off, yeah. but like I seriously, as Carson was talking, this thought really, really came to my mind. Yeah. I think this is why God tells us in the Bible, like it's so important to be evenly yoked, not to get all biblical and churchy, but no, but good. that conversation with Carson was so easy. It was like, we speak the same language, right? It's, 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 we understand. And so it's really not a hard conversation to draw those boundaries. Whereas in other situations, cause I have been out with people where I don't know if we're on the same page a hundred percent spiritually and where our hearts were at with the Lord and how we view marriage. And it was like an awkward conversation. And I was like dreading telling like, Hey, I'm, you know what I mean? Like I watched, I, Carson and I, we joke, but we, we watched some, a little bit of the bachelor this season. <laughs> oh my gosh. A yeah. little bit. Yeah. That. Okay. We watched it. <laughs> and like Maddie, if you've watched it, like, I haven't, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Horrible, and she's waiting for marriage. And that episode where she had to tell pilot Pete, like I'm waiting, you could just feel like she was so terrified to like share that with him and really just be like proud of it. Yeah. And I think that's, that like breaks my heart because girls or guys like be proud of like preserving that and like re- love yourself first and like be proud of that. That's amazing. And yeah. even if you have Say you have had sex. I'm not saying you're better because you haven't, but just honor and love yourself like daily. And that's physically, spiritually, the food we eat. I mean, this is a a whole like life of just, you know, it's not just about thinking about it in a way of like, let's refrain from this and we're bad, but it's just really God wants us to live our lives and our our hearts to be the full potential. And so I'm going on a rabbit trail here, but I think being equally yoked is so important and it makes these conversations a lot easier. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I actually was talking to my mentor today um, and we were talking just about sexuality and sex and how, you know, and so much of this is like, it really comes down to a heart issue and how much we truly love and value ourselves and how much we truly love and value our relationship with God, to be honest. And I actually wrote this quote down from our time together this morning. She's like, and this is like just a statement to live our life on. My life isn't ruled by boundaries. It's ruled by love, love with God. And I love that. Like, it's not just ruled by these legalistic boundaries. Do this, don't do this. It should be ruled. Like we should be doing everything, all these decisions based in love. And at the core of that, a deep love and a respect and an honor for God, you know? And I think that it takes really figuring out what that is for yourself and, and figuring out your sexual ethic and why that's important to you and why you, why, why do you want to wait or why do you want to have these boundaries? What is honoring to you? What is honoring to God? Why? You know, just constantly asking it the question why I don't think we do that enough. And I loved that. Like my life doesn't have to be ruled 
by boundaries, legalism. It's ruled by love and at the core, a deep love of God. And I think that's what you guys are even sharing and what you modeled out. Like in your, you both have such an understanding of what this looks like, loving yourselves, honoring yourselves, which you've consistently done, you know, I mean, not to say like you, you know, it wasn't easy well, throughout perfect, life. Yeah. Yes. But, you know, and then being able to bring that to a relationship and say like, Hey babe, like I love you, but like, I love God. And I love, I love this decision we made. And I want to honor that by, and this is what I feel safe with within that to honor you, to honor God, to honor myself, you know, so good preaching, (laughs) you know, with my jewelry line, I just partnered recently with the wife of, if you've seen the movie, American sniper, Chris Kyle, Mm. American hero, his wife, Taya Kyle, and I have partnered up and just honestly become very dear friends through this process. And just her story of overcoming such grief and tragedy of losing her husband and being a single mom all of a sudden and having just, you know, it's, she's just been through so much, but she gave me such an amazing analogy that I want to share because it can apply really to any aspect I feel like of life. But you know, when a parent is driving in a car and the the kids in the back seat and they're like, are we there yet? I'm hungry. Where are we going? What are we doing? I want this. I want that. And the parent in the front is like, just wait, like we'll be there. I promise. Like, it's going to be great. Like that's almost in a way how we can sometimes let our hearts and anxious thoughts get. And God is in the front seat and he's like, Hey, it's okay. And so that anxious energy and those thoughts, and I just thought that was a brilliant analogy of us calming ourselves when we feel like things are not going our way or we're not in control and to realize like, Hey, that's the cool part of like walking with the Lord is you, you don't put that stress on yourself because we can't control everything. That's impossible. So I just wanted to share that analogy because I think that can apply in dating of like freaking out being like, Oh my gosh, I'm this age and I'm single or this age and I've had a divorce or whatever. Like God has beautiful things ahead for us. We just need to not freak out in the process. (laughs) Yeah. And that's so good when it comes to abstinence too, or like waiting. It's like, Hey, it's going to be amazing once we get there. Don't worry. Like, it's great that you have that desire. It's great. All of those things. Sexuality is good. Your desire for sex, all of it's good. Let's we, he created it. He loves it. It's like, if you're in the car, you're like, I'm excited. And that's a good thing. It's good to be excited, (laughs) but can we also be patient and can we trust that it's going like God is going to do what he says he's going to do, that he is the almighty father, that like, we will get to that destination. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Even if it so, takes longer for some people than others. And that's the point of like, you know, our, nobody's story is exactly the same and God doesn't promise us, but there's so much beauty in the patience, the perseverance, the clinging to hope, choosing faith over fear as, wow, as cheesy Christian as that sounds, but really being able to like cling onto faith that God's driving the car and he's got it. I love that analogy. You guys, this is so good. I feel like we could keep going, but I I do want to just, before we ask the final question, you guys recently in the fall got engaged. I'd love to just hear just like a little snippet about that and what you're most excited about in this upcoming season. And then we'll, I'll ask you our final interview question that everyone Every guest gets asked. (laughs) Awesome. Okay. So the engagement was something that I knew in my mind that I wanted to do for a really long time. The challenge for me was just figuring out when to ask her dad. And (laughs) because uh, Angela had shared with me a couple of times that, you know, she tried to share with her dad that she was into me and we were in love and all this and tell him some really positive things. And he'd say, that's great, honey. Well, let me know how you feel in six months. <laughs> or a year. How long time. did you guys yeah. date? I don't think I even asked you that. 10 months, and Woo. Got mm-hmm. 10 months. Yes. So good. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sitting here thinking like, I didn't think there was any point to wait just for the calendar to turn. Yeah. I was like, I love this girl. I love what she's about. I love her heart. We're not 21 year old kids. We're not 19 year old kids that are um, experiencing emotion for the first time and acting reactively. Like we were both fairly mature and understand what we want. And I was like, I just does, it doesn't make sense to me to wait on the calendar. 
Yeah. Um, all four seasons. You yeah. heard that a lot. You got to date someone all four seasons. Yes. Yeah, I, just, I just really don't believe that. I think maturity of the relationships, what's important and not how much time has passed. Yeah. So I, I eventually um, did get a chance to ask her dad without her knowing. So once I had his, had his permission and she didn't know the next weekend, I just said, Hey, and she want to just kind of get away this weekend and, you know, just go relax. And of course her being someone that loves travel, she's like, yeah, let's go. And what are we doing? doing? <laughs> <laughs> let's do it, babe. I yeah. Sometimes I'm like, babe, where do you want to go this weekend? He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it was Thursday, the first time I asked that and just like, Hey, do you want to get away? And she's like, yeah, let's go do something. Let's detach. So Friday morning, I woke up really early and just wrote down a list of everything that I'd need to get done before we left on this trip. Mm. And the first one was, okay, get the ring. And <laughs> oh my I goodness. Like, there, I can't, can't go propose on this trip if I don't have a ring. <laughs> so I had, I had the stone already. I mean, it was actually at the jeweler. It just was not set. It was totally a loose stone. So first thing that I did was email the jeweler and say, hey, is it is it reasonable to get this done by 12 o'clock? <laughs> and yeah, luckily, Angela, as we've mentioned before, has her, has her own jewelry line. So yeah. she had a great relationship with the jeweler. And he was like, yeah, I'll do anything for her. I'll get it uh... done. So I was like, Phew, all right, got the top of the off the list. And I was like, all right, then flights and hotels and figure out what we're actually going to do there, plan all the logistics. And then I was like, I got to get my hair cut. We're going to take engagement pictures, like all this stuff. And then ended up booking a flight at like one o'clock. So ended up planning the whole engagement, basically the whole trip that morning, Friday morning. We leave Friday afternoon and we get out there. And one of my best friends was playing out in LA at the time. They were playing against LA on the road. So <laughs> I knew he would be able to help me. And I was like, this would be just a really cool time to propose with. Um, them there and Angela's best friend living out in LA and just it being a gorgeous city out there. So we chose to go out to LA and got in, got in Friday night and got to see our friends in the morning. And my plan was to go have breakfast with my buddy who was playing out there and tell Angela that I'm going to have breakfast with him, but then really drive over to the hotel that we were staying at that night and find a spot, pick out a good place to repose, maybe talk <laughs> to the concierge, have them help me set something up, plan something cool. So I get in, get in the Uber to go over to the hotel and because of LA traffic, it's going to take... <laughs> An hour and a half to get there, and it's yep. like two mm -hmm. miles away. Yep, yep. And Sounds right. Then I'm like, hold on. So this is going to be a three-hour round trip and just travel. I was like, this is absurd. I can't, I can't leave Angela at the hotel for four and a half hours and then say, hey, will you marry me? <laughs> like, she's going to be pissed. <laughs> so we ended up just literally walking around the corner from where Angela and I were staying, and Trevor and I had breakfast and we talked about proposal, and then actually my buddies wife got on the phone and called the hotel that we were staying at that night and she actually helped work things out with the concierge and thanks um, Allie. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so she she was incredibly helpful and oh, wow. started started getting the ball rolling and then and so we go back phone a lot that day i was like he is what who is he texting yeah so the enneagram five but, not is very present and not usually on the, yeah, <laughs> the guy yeah. who's not even on instagram yeah that's yeah, so true yeah that's to a t so <laughs> <laughs> anyway we we get over we start driving over to our hotel and um, mally's still helping us out we get to the hotel check in go up to our room and the Emmys, I believe, were going on that weekend. Yeah, the, the Emmys. Emmys. Yeah, oh. the Emmys were going on out, out in LA. So everything at our hotel was booked. Every single suite, every single event space, every single like garden Emmy corner. Parties, everywhere. It was. Oh my yeah, gosh! The entire thing was rented out by HBO, actually. So there was nothing available, and the concierge was like man, we could, there's a nice restaurant next door. And I'm like, no, I don't want to propose at a restaurant or <laughs> propose it and just in our room. And so it was about three o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday that I was planning on proposing. I was like, you know what? I'm probably just gonna have to push this off because I don't want to force it. I want it to be special. I want it to be memorable for Angela. And I was like, you know what? I'm probably just gonna have to wait. 
And then, then I get a text from a concierge and he's like, Hey, we have a helicopter pad on top of the oh, building. Oh, okay. Where, yeah. He was like, you want to go check it out? And I was like, heck yeah. Yes. <laughs> so he called, I had him call the room and say, Hey, Mr. Blair, like we have a issue with your credit card. Could you come down to the front desk? So that, that gave me an excuse to leave, left and went out and went up to the top of the building, <laughs> checked out the helicopter pad. And this is like 3.30 in the afternoon. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. This is, this is perfect. Yes. Like, how, did, how did you not think of this first? Like, this is awesome. This would be my go-to. So I'm up there at 3.30 and I called Angel's best friend, Courtney. And I was like, hey, Courtney, I'm going to propose to Angel tonight. Oh my <laughs> God. Screaming apparently. Yeah, she just imme- immediately just screamed into the phone. I was like, "Whoa, okay." <laughs> Someone's excited. <laughs> like, I knew it. I knew it. I knew you were going to do that when you came out here. So recruited her to come help and shoot some video of it and help me set up and um, surprise Angela afterwards. So yay! Uh, yeah. So we literally planned that at three thirty in the afternoon. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Last minute. And yeah. yeah. So he's like. You want to go take pictures at sunset on the roof? Like, there's a cool terrace, and I was like, "What?" I was like, "Okay." <laughs> so we get up there, and there were two chairs and a thing of roses, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, it was <laughs> truly magical, and the sky was like purple at sunset. I, it was just, it was magical. Oh, well, thank you, LA, yeah. for the sunsets. Oh, I thank, love it. Thank you, LA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And and thank you, the- Robert, at the concierge. Yes, you know seriously. <laughs> you guys, that's amazing. I love it. I love seeing the photos. Oh my gosh, everything. I was like, this is beautiful. Yes, helicopter pad. Um, yes, beautiful yes. sunset. <laughs> yeah, it was it was great. And <gasps> yes. me, and then my girlfriend Courtney popped out and just it was so fun. She was Yay! Oh Well, you guys, I love this. I love your story. I'm so excited you're getting married in a month and a half. Okay, so I asked every guest the same last question on our episode, which is just, what is your final nugget of dating advice for the listeners today? It could be anything you want. Mm. I'll go ahead and go first. So I can can set a a low bar for you. (laughs) Uh, I think I guess my heart kind of feels this way because I saw a lot of guys that didn't treat women well. I don't know if that was just pride and ego from what they believed about themselves from the industry they were in or whatever sense of entitlement they felt or whatnot, whatever caused it. Um, just saw a lot of guys that didn't treat women well. And I'd, I would always ask myself, why, why do they put up with this? Like, why do you date this guy? So I, I've always just like had this kind of desire to just tell women to hold guys to a higher standard. Like you're, you're worth so much more than these guys that just don't don't respect you like yeah. if some if a guy doesn't treat you with respect then don't even don't even mess with it i no just good. it hurts when you see these girls just get hurt all the time so I, I would just like to encourage guys and girls just to hold yourself to a high standard and yeah. it's it's okay it's okay if you're not in a relationship you don't have to be in a in a relationship just to be in a relationship i think it's un- important to understand what you want and kind of like you said earlier know your why yeah. If you know the why, then that's that's what's going to hold you to that standard. So I, th- I think just having that high standard and understanding what you want is extremely helpful. Yeah, so good. Yeah. And I think, you know, along our journey of dating and even before I met Carson, I've just done a lot of personal growth. And I think it's easy our, for our culture and just the dating like, oh, you meet that person and happily ever after and you complete me and you make me happy and yes, of course, Carson makes me so happy and I'm just so in love. But also it's, it's important, I think, that we don't put so much value in that. Like our happiness, even when we when I am married, right? Like I can't, Carson's not going to define my happiness. Yeah. Like we own our own happiness. And so I just, I just want to encourage like, you know, everybody to really, it's, it's not an obligation of your partner, putting that on some a relationship and really putting more worth on that than just being whole yourself. And so I think, I think that's really important to remember too. So, and also God's timing really is perfect. And if you are waiting or struggling, 
like really he he really knows what he's doing. He really is in the driver's seat. So <laughs> he really I mean, is I was ready to be single the rest of my life. And then Carson <laughs> walked into my DM. So uh, <laughs> you know, I know it's so cliche to be like, just hold out, but really, truly. Yeah. This it always seems like our seasons are so unbearable when we're in them, but in the scheme of our entire life, if we live to on average what 80, 90, whatever, the season actually is short in comparison, you know, and there's a beautiful purpose within it. I mean, if we get married, hopefully the hope is that we're married like 50 years. So, wow, I am not even close to living 50 years yet, but if I get married, I'll hopefully get married and be married 50 years. That's a lot of years. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that, you know, with me, the hard things I've gone through in relationships I've really grown from, and now I can appreciate what Carson and I have so much. And so almost embrace the valleys. I don't know, you know, embrace those moments that are really are defining and can help you just be a better wife or husband one day and and grow from it. Don't get stuck. Yeah. Yeah. The learning experience. You don't have to settle for it. Yeah. Yes. The hard stuff too makes you appreciate the good stuff so much more, man. Yeah. You guys are amazing. Okay. So Carson, we already know that you don't have, you're not big on Insta, but I'd love to get Angela's <laughs> info and your jewelry line, Angela. And just if people want to connect with you and find out more about Lavare, like tell us all the info. <laughs> yeah. So I started my jewelry line because I used to wear a promise ring and I really wanted to create a line of jewelry that could remind women of God's truths for their lives. So I call it Elevari means to elevate. And our mission is to fashion your faith. So check us out at Elevari Jewelry on Instagram or Facebook, but yes. elevarijewelry.com. Or you can find me at Angela Zatapek. Pretty simple, right? Zatapek. Yes. <laughs> I'm upgrading soon to Angela Blair, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm on Angela, Angela Zatapek is my handle. I would love to answer any questions. Yay. I love it. You guys just thank you for sharing your story with us today. It's such an honor. I I love you both so much. I'm so excited for you guys to get married and just continue to spread like your testimony to other people who are struggling in singleness too. So thank you guys for, for really using this to really encourage other people too. I love it so much. Thank you so much for having us on. We're honored and we know that you have an amazing listener. Is that a word? Listenership? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <kind of>. <laughs> <laughs> just like awesome people that, you know, you interact with. So we're really thankful just to have the opportunity to share our story. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, this is this is really the first time we've been able to share this. So it's actually been some cool thought processes for us and thought experiments. So it's it's yeah. been fun. Yeah, you guys are awesome. I'm so honored. And I don't I don't think this is gonna be the last time you share this publicly. So we're just gonna claim that right now. <laughs> claim it. <laughs> Oh my goodness, friends. I just love Carson and Angela. Would you guys do me a favor? Would you go and just tell them how much you enjoyed this episode? Would you just share and spread the love with them? I want to really honor them for sharing their story with us. This is one of the first times they've actually shared their story publicly, and I could not be more thankful that they did so on our podcast. I'm just so incredibly inspired by both Carson and Angela. And you guys, I just want to say this. So many of you asked me, like, where is the line when it comes to physical boundaries, Kate? How do we do this? And I just want to encourage you, ask yourself, what is your sexual ethic? Why is that your sexual ethic? How did you get there? I really want to encourage you to start asking these questions and diving in deeper. This is not a here, do this and don't do this. This really has to be connected to your heart. All right, y'all. Thank you for listening to today's episode and I'll see you next week. This show is part of the Converge Podcast Network.